Hey everyone, welcome to the Way of Warp Part Three, and this is my continuation tutorial in the Way of Warp tutorial series. And here is the third part. In this video, we will learn if else and how to apply that in Warp. It's very important to learn if else. An entire system is depend on if else, not just in Houdini. In real life also, we use it every time. And let me just show you the quick example. Yeah, so let's take the example of traffic signal. And here we have these three colors, right? So let me play this video now. So here, let's write this in a code. If traffic signal is red, car stop is equal to one. It means car will stop over here. And if traffic signal light is green, car move one. So here, it's pretty example, and it applies everywhere. Even if you click a button, also there is option that if you click a button, then it will happen this thing, right? And in Houdini, let's understand how we can apply that. And let's just clear out some concept. And let me take a sphere over here to do that. Right. And I want to move this y axis. And let me just quickly animate this 100 frames. Let me use front viewport. Take a screenshot. So if sphere is over here, when it reach this area, I want to turn this into red and before that it will be green. So let's just see that. So it's condition over here. Let's do that. And now we will need warp over here. And if I play this, I have this animation. And here I want to turn this into red. Let's dive inside over here and I want to change a color. So first I need these two colors. One is red, right? So I have this two value over here. I'll just check that. This is red and this is green. So before getting into condition and everything, I need a value on which value I can apply this on. So I have y axis right so it's moving in a y axis over here here also you can see that this is y axis and i need data of y axis and for that we can utilize position but here we have vector value so we have convert this into three float now and we have node for that vector to float yes i have this x y and z and i am interested in using in y axis and here I want to compare that and we have that node compare we just have to compare and if I click over here currently it's set to equal to I have less than greater than so let's just use greater than now and it will give me this integer value which is true or false and let's just check what is that if I connect this over here and this is true and this is false right and it's working and it's before that if i use less than it will be invert right and here we have this one value and here we have zero value that's right and now I don't want white and black. I want this value to utilize. So I can use two way switch. And you can see here that this is the condition and this is my input one, which is this and input two. Let me just connect over here. And I know it's very easy example but i want you to clear this concept of if else if the condition is true this will happen if condition is false then this will happen and here we are using greater than greater than means it's true nice let's see what interesting things we can do with this thing and this time i will use grid and i want some mesh over here And now I will use WAP and I can just use turbulent noise. Good. 
and I will go with sparse noise. This looks nice. And let me just check the data of noise. I can go to spreadsheet and I have minus six and positive seven. And I want to utilize this value to delete this basically. And we can do that easily. So here also we need compare, that's for sure. And I want exact value. So here, this is equal, I need So let me just animate this over here. You shouldn't do it, but let's just see it through. So you can see that I have some error over here. Let me just check. So cannot have channels which depends on time, meaning you cannot animate this over here. So how we can animate this? So to animate anything in a warp, we have to always promote this. And if you promote that here, you have that control to animate this thing. And now let me just set that same value over here. Make sure everything is black. Yeah. And if you want white in the beginning, you can do that over here as well. So you can just go over here and greater than. So it will be white. Means condition is true. Cool. So here I want to delete that. And to delete this, we have to use remove point. And in remove point, we can see that we have one option handle and ptnum. So let's just connect this handle. Oh, it's not working. So maybe this is not right. So let's connect this over here. This is also not working. And how this works is basically it requires point number. And what I mean by point number is if I check over here that I have this two, four, five, six. So if you want to specifically delete that number, so let me just use constant and can, it's an integer and I can just use two, four, five, six. I can connect this, right? So it requires a point number and here we have just from zero to one and that's not useful in this case, right? So I want exactly a number and how we can deal with that. And if I go over here, I have some attributes over here and one of them is ptnum, which is useful. And here, remember that last time I was assigning the two way switch thing. Let me just use that again. Let me connect this. And here that I have a value that we can give green red, but here, instead of giving it value, I can provide a point number. So at the moment, this is white. Let me just slice that. This is white means this condition is true, right? So here, I don't want to delete anything. And I can use minus one point number. So this is minus one point number, which I don't have in the scene. That's fine. It won't delete anything. And if when it the condition is false, I want to delete the pitinum. So it will just filter that out. And I can just easily connect this over here. Let's see now. You can see it's working. And in fact, you can make this even more interesting by using attribute blur. So this is fully procedural. This is superb, right? So if you learn this in more deeper way, it will open lots of ways to implement, right? And trust me, it applies to everything, not just in Houdini, in other software as well. So you have to clear out this concept that how you can utilize this. Now you have understood that how we can use two ways switch compare, and now you need to work on condition. The more better condition you have, the more clear condition you have, you will benefit and with clear direction. And let's check another example. So what I want to do over here, I know one particle in this area, 
for XYZ reasons. Maybe it's blocking my camera or it's my blocking my camera view or something, right? So I want to do that. And let's see how we can achieve that over here. So for that, we can use pop warp and it's almost similar only. So you can see that same attributes and output as well. And here also we need to understand. So this is positive and negative, right? And this is Z axis and I can use vector to float and use Z axis. And this will be a bit complicated, but let's just try to simplify as much as we can. So first condition is we know the condition. So here do we need position? So if we were dealing at SOP level, then it makes sense using position. But while dealing with particles, we can utilize velocities, right? So how this moving is velocity and do check out my introduction to particles to understand this thing, everything, right? But for now, I'll just quickly switch the words over here that I need velocity. And which velocity I need is Z positive velocity. So I can just use compare. It's greater than. If it's greater than means condition is true, right? So here we can use that. And we have used two way switch till now. And it's not the only way of doing this. We can even use mix as well. And here we have that bias. And this is zero value and this is one value. In our case, the condition is true means one, right? So here we have to check. And I can just connect this way. And you can see that. These are the particles and I want to just reduce the velocity. So what I will do over here and I want to use this velocity only. And again, I will use float to vector and let's just understand. So what's happening over here, the black particles, I don't want to change velocity. So I will just use as it is without changing any velocity over here and for the white particles i want to change just z axis only so this is right this is right and i want to change this over here and how we can just reduce that and best way is multiply so if you multiply any value with one it will be one if you reduce that by 0.9 it will gradually reduce that by multiplying that thing and let me just utilize them and quickly show you that thing how it's working see it's working really well the more you increase this thing the best way of using this it looks dynamic that it's not spreading in that direction right we have one or two particles which is great Right? It's not blocking my camera angle or view. So you can use this. And this is just a simple example. You have in your scene, you know, the complex scene, how you can apply this and you can even use any specific direction. You can use implement attribute warp. And this is warp way. I want to take a moment to show you pop wrangle as well and how we can utilize this in wrangle. And in pop wrangle, it's a lot similar, you know, so you just need to write if velocity z is greater than zero right what we were using in compare over here yeah it's greater than zero then i can just write just change my z axis only and multiply by 0.9 so it will reduce and here i have to use else one more curly bracket Right, so these are the condition I can just use whatever velocity is there just keep it as it is without changing and let's see the view and in fact you can just reduce this even more let's just see instant result right so it's working so this is if condition is true then this happens, else condition is false, then this happens. I hope you learned something in this tutorial. And also you can comment that what you want to learn next in the way of WAP.
Hope you like this tutorial and see you next time.